this is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date, November the 28th, 2018, and we've got a special, special guest today, and I'm going to let Vegas introduce it. All right. Good afternoon, everyone, and hope everyone had a green trading day. We have quite a few stocks to talk about, but before we get started, I do want to welcome to our show today, um, Peter Tahoe, as in Lake Tahoe. Um, he has actually been trading uh, Bitcoin cryptos for quite a few years. He's out in Los Angeles, and he's joining us today because, you know, Bitcoin's actually been on the move. So who else better to talk about that than Peter? So Peter, welcome, and thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. Um, yeah, we had some nice movement today on Bitcoin. Um, we came all the way down um, to to the very low, 3,500 recently, this past couple of days, from our high of 20,000 at the end of last year. So um, the big question that people want to know is, is, is this the bottom? Is it time to get in? And I would say that uh, the past couple of days um, were definitely a good time to jump in and grab it. And what we're going to do now is we're going to monitor the situation. Um, if we take a look at uh, our chart, you know, we see a nice bottom formed at 35, 3600, depending on the exchange that you're looking at, because they're not uh, all exactly the same. And we had some really strong volume coming in uh, and supporting it at 35. And then yesterday we had a big day because there was the, a big conference in New York is consensus invest this is um what you know consensus in new york is is one of the biggest conferences uh in the country and they have it uh well it's a couple times a year um the one in the beginning of the year is is more for um let's say the builders and the people at large but, but this one the invest part this is more um bridging the legacy markets with crypto. So we had some really heavy hitters from big banks and big corporations and hedge funds and institutions taking a look at what's being built in the blockchain world as of yesterday. So, and as it turned out, um, the Bitcoin price uh, was at this uh, very low support level and right at the tip of, uh, of a wedge. So that volume came in yesterday and it pushed over, uh, pushed up overnight. And then this morning, you know, Wall Street, you know, saw saw the action and they heard about, you know, what everyone was, was uh, discussing yesterday and they punched it up. So we went all the way up to the, the natural resistance at 4,300 and now it's pushing back as expected so so where do you go from here is it a buy right now i would just say i mean at this exact moment i'm looking at uh coinbase um if you are in the us coinbase is perhaps where you are buying um on other exchanges you know like bitfinex um it's it's closer to 4300 but the bottom line is um, if, if I was monitoring this situation, I would watch this retest that's going to happen tonight. And I'm sure overnight, the bears will try and push it down even more. And I'd be looking for an entry, you know, around 4,100. And the bottom line is, is 4,000 needs to hold up. Um, you know, this has been a bear market year. And, you know, this means that the bears have ruled the market this whole year so so do we flip bullish completely in one day well sentiment doesn't necessarily go completely bullish however i think all we're looking to do right now is, is have a firm you know confirmation of breaking the downtrend and i would say that you know as long as you know we're holding over four thousand you know over over a night and tomorrow then then things are looking pretty good um, we do have some catalysts to keep in mind, um, but you, you know the big thing that everyone's looking for is an ETF approved by the SEC. The thinking there is that um, it's really a custodial, a custodial issue. So this allows uh, essentially um, hedge funds and even retirement funds, they can now actually um, have exposure to crypto without you know worrying about like the private keys and things like this so i would say 
um, in this very short term, we're looking for to hold 4,000 and maybe getting, you know, some starter positions going on here. I think that we'll see a nice accumulation going on really for the rest of the year. Um, because uh, I mentioned the ETF, which was scheduled to be approved numerous times, uh, but the SEC keeps pushing that back. And I think that they'll probably continue to push that back until next year. So there was also another big catalyst, which is Bakkt, B-A-K-K-T. Um, basically, the parent company of the New York Stock Exchange um, is going to open, they're going to have their own crypto fund, right? So, um, and the good part about this is it's not actually a, a derivative trade. It's one that requires physical possession of Bitcoin in order um, for people to invest in, in that fund. So that means that there's going to be a buying, right? You know, when it's derivatives, it's like, hey, you know, I'm just going to, you know, short you. Well, you know, you don't, you don't, I don't have to buy the actual Bitcoin, you know, you're just pushing it down. So um, Bakht, which was scheduled to start happening on December 12th, that actually just got pushed last week. And this was, uh, it got pushed back to January last week. And this is one of the things that precipitated the fall. Also, the Bitcoin cash fork um, was a big reason for, for it coming down, Bitcoin coming down so far. Um, so uh, what we're talking about right here really is setting ourselves up for next year, right? So you're getting your starter positions going. And, you know, me personally, I'm very, very bullish on crypto. Um there's so much FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt that comes out, and so much of it is propagated by the media. Well, you want to know what? The truth of the matter is they talked it down because they wanted to get in cheap. I mean, listen, it was 20000 um, you know, let's see, at the end of December, and so now you're buying it. I mean, you're buying it at thirty six fifty yesterday. This is a great deal. Um, so... I don't know if we're going to dip back below 4,000 again, but if we do, I think that it'll be bought up very quickly. So, um, you know, long term, I think that we are we are back to all time highs within a year and a half. Um, the other very important catalyst that's long term, that's within two years, but it's, it's like just over a year and a half, is the Bitcoin having. This means that the mining rewards. Uh, that well that the miners get right from mining Bitcoin. You know, mining Bitcoin is you're essentially just confirming the transactions on the blockchain. Um, that mining reward uh, is cut in half. So one would say, well, why would someone continue to mine something if you know if if it's if you're getting half of what you were getting before? Well, the idea is that the price is at least two times what it was. So then it makes sense for the miners to continue to do that. And that's generally what happens. I mean, you can have, you know, a having written into the code of, uh, you know, of any uh, crypto that's mineable. So um, the bottom line is, you know, um, all ships will rise and fall with Bitcoin. So, um, you know, the, the other big ones like Ethereum and Litecoin, you know, they're going to follow suit with Bitcoin. But... Um, something that to keep in mind, listen, it, crypto is a big game. It's not just Bitcoin. I mean, the truth of the matter is, you know, you could buy 200 bucks and send it over to, you know, another exchange that and trade altcoins and flip those, you know, every day. I mean, there's always a lot of action, especially in the altcoins. You know, just today, you know, Nexus, Nexus pumped up 100%. Now, I happen to like Nexus, that's N-X-S, um, but clearly a whale had accumulated um, at the super cheap prices and then it went up like like literally 105%. So there's always a trade, you know, whatever Bitcoin is doing, uh, you know, up or down, there's, there's always money to be made. So um, I would say, you know, right now you're looking for entries in the very low fours. Let's see what happens overnight. The weekly close on Sunday will be very important. So don't FOMO. Uh, you don't have to chase there. You know, it, it ran like wild last year. But, you know, nowadays um, with the uh, you have the futures market and the derivatives market, there's a few things that that 
keeps it on lid. So it's not going to run as crazy as it did last year. So, you know, let the trade come to you and, you know, look to accumulate at these low levels. Okay. So I have a question for you, Peter, because, you know, a lot of people, you know, as soon as they hear, oh, Bitcoin's moving, Bitcoin's running, right away they say, um, you know, all Bitcoin stocks on watch, you know, like Mara, Riot, DPW, DIGAF on the OTC. So how does this, you know, kind of action kind of, you know, trigger that? Because, you know, I'm watching those stocks and I'm not really seeing them running just because Bitcoin's running. So maybe you can help people understand that a little better. Yeah, I, I mean, there are some some of those that are okay. I mean, a riot, um, I think is is okay. Uh, I think that they're actually legitimate. When they first came out, I I didn't necessarily think so. But you know, there was there was a um, a decent day trade. I mean, listen, they're day trades, right? They Bitcoin pops, and you know, you'll see a little pop on some of the of the crypto stocks. Um, you know. And, and in fact, I would take a look at those that pop today and those that didn't pop today. So you're prepared for the next time. You know, there was a move of, let's see, you could have, uh, let me see from open, you could have, right, you could have got from 185 to 250, right? So, you know, even, you know, you could see it start moving up last night, actually, because people saw the strength of Bitcoin. So they got on a little bit early on, on that. Um, Mara... Let's see, that had a decent pop. Um, listen, uh, the truth of the matter is, is that any of these uh, crypto stocks, if they're miners, so if that company you know, has like a ton of mining rigs, they're way, way underwater. So, um, because it's currently, anyone who's mining Bitcoin right now, they're doing it at a loss. So, um, so those, they're really just day trades right now. Um, you know, Bitcoin has to get back up to like 10,000 for the companies themselves to actually be profitable. So, I mean, for, for me, there, there, are, there are no long-term holds in those stocks. Um, you know, you're getting some exposure to them, but you're not holding the actual asset. So, um, you know, the, the bottom line is, is we had a nice bounce off of a bottom after a very long decline you know, on Bitcoin. So um, we had, you know, a really good movement yesterday, overnight, and then today. So, uh, so the, you know, so we had a pop in, in some, some of them. Okay, well, that I think explains it. And I really do say, uh, I actually think the move on uh, Riot was probably the best one today, because it did have a low of 179 and ran all the way to 250. So uh, that was probably one of the stronger ones today on the blockchain. So yeah, I've been trading yeah. white right for a while too, and it's way oversold. I mean, it, I was flipping at what Vegas around five, six, seven bucks last uh, oh, little yes. bit ago. Not too long <laughs> yeah. ago. Not too long ago. Yeah. And yeah, and you don't want to be in any of those stocks when it comes to earnings because they're all way, 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 way down. You know, yeah. like Mike Mike Novogratz, who is you know sort of this well-known billionaire who's you know very hype on crypto. You know, his company um, famously released some information yesterday. Galaxy, you know, and they lost. You know, they're down millions, millions, and you know people are leaving. So the bottom line is this year was very much like a builder's year. Um, but you know, long term, um, you know, I, I like it a lot. Um, you know, next year and 2020 for the having, you know, for sure. And, and it is the future. I mean, the bottom line is this is how, you know, trade will be conducted, um, you know, very soon. I mean, it's just blockchain is just, it's a better way to do things. It, it's like so, a, it's like a world currency almost. And, and there, there's nothing like that right now. Yeah. I mean, and that's, you know, one of the things about being so disruptive is that, you know, all, all of the current power structures will always try and push you down because they stand to lose, you know, what you gain, they lose. So, you know, I mean, the original ethos, um, you know, from which it sprang is certainly in alignment with my, with my own views. Um, you know, you're essentially taking the hands out of central bankers. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, but but you know even the IMF, I mean they everyone knows that that this is how it's going to be. I mean this is how we're going to do business and it makes sense. So they're sort of you know prolonging it so they can get their own position, you know, and integrate their own systems with this and not be completely disintermediated. I mean otherwise you know you just put so many people out of a job immediately that you you know you cause so many enemies. That's why you get so many people shorting it, so many people talking it down. Um, because they're they're fighting for survival. <laughs> yeah. And beings, um, beings we're sitting here, I'm gonna just go ahead and talk about riot real fast. We're look I'm looking right now at a at a one year chart. And you can see last year when we had the big run, riot when the, the thing about Bitcoin came out, riot ran all the way to forty six dollars. And then it was just like a, you know, a, a pyramid down it just kind of corrected itself bounced up a few times so we're sitting here just last week we were at a year low at 165 and all of a sudden we have the bitcoin breakout so i'd keep a not good eye on a uh, on riot for this coming week and next week and see what happens with it yeah yeah we'll, for some bounce we'll plays see. and flips like you said and scalps and stuff like that yeah for me you know all the the um Bitcoin stocks for me they're all day trades on big pops um, and and then they fade. Uh, that's you know that's I, I don't I don't see follow through uh, unless unless you know Bitcoin you know holds which it's going to have to prove to you know it's going to have to prove it tonight and overnight and this week and and really you know at the weekly the close of the weekly on Sunday that hey you know yeah. people are they're going to want to see that confirmation that okay we, this is a true reversal and then. Um, and then sure, right? And then these other ones look super cheap, you know, at these levels. It looks cheap to me right now because I was flipping it around six bucks. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that's great. Thank you so much, Peter, for coming here and talking with us in the I Love Stocks community because uh, this really helps people better understand uh, what's happening in the Bitcoin crypto world. So I'm sure we'll be in contact regularly and uh, hear more updates from you because a lot of people like just knowing what's going on. So we appreciate this very much. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. And you, know, you can find me on Twitter, Peter Tahoe. Um, I post, you know, there you know, a fair amount, you know, certainly every day. And, you know, like I said, listen, there's always a play. There's always a trade in crypto, you know, whatever Bitcoin's doing. You know the the altcoins are an entire you know other universe, um, so there's there's always something you can do. So sure, my pleasure, and let's uh, let's do it again. Yeah, yes. great, thank you. If we can get that link to your Twitter page, yeah, we'll send us the link. Video. Yeah, we'll put in the video too. Okay, That'd all be right. Great. Well, thank you very much, Peter. We appreciate it. Okay, guys, take care. Bye. Thanks. All right, Jim. So that's great. And uh, I'll put uh, Peter's link in our video information tonight for those of you that like, even if you don't trade Bitcoin, crypto, you still like knowing what's going on. I will, uh, or you know, someone that does trade it, I'll post his link and you guys can check him out. All right. So Jim and I are now going to talk about some stocks and uh, we're going to talk about NEO and IQ and Bev, David's T, and I might even throw in a little bonus. So. Why don't we start with Neo, Jim? Wasn't that pretty on our video last night? Oh boy, I'm just showing the website <laughs> of this pretty car right now. It's called <laughs> love Nile it. ES8, and then wow. here's the ES9. Don't <laughs> that's what I want right there. I want Jim one wants of them. That car. How much so, is it? Do you know? Oh no, I don't know how much that oh. thing is. Okay, well maybe it's a good deal. I Probably. heard the cars they make are good deals, so I'll have to check it out. Okay, well, let's look at the yearly chart on Nile. It's new yeah. IPO. It's been out for about three months now, three or four months. It opened up right around 535, or it had a low of 535 that day. And within three days, ran up to 1380. And then ever since then, we've had the trade war battle going on, which we had going on back then. And we've had a couple little bounces and corrections in, within this channel. This channel goes up to about $8.24. That was the last resistance that I drew on this chart. And that was the high of the channel. So today, and we, and here we are at the bottom last month at $5.95 under 6 bucks. 
So I'm going to pull up the 20 day chart and you'll get a better picture of what we're looking at. For the last 20 days, this thing's been kind of bullish. It bounced from that 562 level, and today we had a, a month a 20 day high of 2824, which is right on my resistance there. So, what we want to see tomorrow, maybe just a little bitty pullback, not much, but we want to see this thing run on out and break out of that $8.24. But um, we've had Nile on our eyes on our watch list ever since the IPO broke out I think there's a lot in store for this stock this is just like another Tesla so you'll definitely want a piece of the pie when it gets up to around 20 30 40 50 bucks and that is Nio. all that right one. and I got well, which one I want to talk about today which one this is IQ I've been wanting to flip okay. this stock forever and today I just thought about it and I turned and I looked at the chart and I'm right now I'm going to pull up a year's chart on it. I don't think this thing's been out for a year either. This no, and I do want to mention to people that are not familiar with the stock, you know, this is the parent company of Baidu. Okay, I don't know if a lot of people knew that. BIDU is the parent company of yeah. IQ. It's a, it's China, right? Correct. They're yeah. in Beijing. Yeah, I got the website up right here. Mm -hmm. And and what they do is they uh, they more or less have platforms that provide a collective internet video content. So you know, and I've loved this stock. I mean, this thing ran all the way up to forty dollars. So we'll get back to the chart here. And we had a high of this when the IPL came out, and that was back in in February, March. It was about a 15.30, and then it just had a beautiful run for about three months, all the way up to $46. And ever since then, we've had a pullback, more or less ever since, you know, the nitty-gritty has been going on with the trade war. And so here we are, we're at a bottom here, and I saw this today, and I was telling Vegas the other day, anytime this is under 20 bucks, I want to play this. And so today I saw it, and I said, hey, we're under 20 bucks. Actually, we had a low of just around nineteen dollars, so I got in at nineteen seventeen, and I sold it at around nineteen seventy. So I was able to make a pretty good little flip out of that stock right there. And this is IQ. Keep it on watch. I think this is something that has a big enough spread on it every day where you can probably flip it once or twice a week. Yes, and you know what? I just want to say that, you know, when this came out on IPO, I mean, the IPO price was about $18. Yep. So, I mean, the price that you bought it at was pretty much close to that. Yep. So, that's right. I mean, you've got a really, really good deal. And I actually think that, um, you know, the reason that it's actually, you know, with everything going on with the China uh, trade wars, um, until that gets settled, uh, we are seeing a lot of the China stocks uh you know further devalued and uh, obviously some of these are trying to form a bottom and uh, i think that maybe when things get settled hopefully in a positive way um with the trade war there uh we might obviously see a lot of these china plays you know rebound and oh, I agree. Um, you know right now we know that iq is not the netflix of china which you know a lot of people seem to say that that's the netflix of china but you know what? It has amazing growth potential. So uh, I think definitely like what Jim said, keep this one on watch because I think IQ can definitely be a leader in the market. Yeah, I believe it's it's at a perfect support level here right now. Anywhere under $20. So let's oh. talk about, oh, Vegas. We okay. mentioned this one just the other day. <laughs> well, we mentioned uh, NBEV. And uh, actually, we mentioned specifically David's Tea, okay? So I just want to mention that. Um, so I do want to mention, obviously, just very quickly, um, this stock, these stocks both broke out today, especially NBEV. And, you know, we had this today. Um, I actually called an idea in the, in the group today to look to trade this for a day trade at $3.70. And then, you know, it didn't really do anything, and it went to, like, 373 And then I said to people, I know it's a boring trade, but I said, you know, guys, 
when you trade NBEV and it's under $4, it's pretty bullish to me. So, you know, people were kind of bored and maybe didn't hold it. But let me tell you, the stock rallied. But before we get into the chart, I just want to explain what was going on. So the news was that, you know, this farm bill could actually blow up the cannabis market. And, you know, people are wondering, like, what is this farm bill? And a lot of people didn't even really know what that is. Um, but, uh, you know, this is a, a bill that is a top priority for the Congress to pass before the end of the year. And if it becomes law, we could actually see uh, cannabis products on the shelves of every drugstore in America. So if it's actually fully legalized, I think the market could explode with sales can hit going towards estimates of about $22 billion by 2022, which is higher than the um you know, U.S. cannabis industry, uh, which was quoted by Bethany Gomez, who's the director of research for a firm called Brightfield Group. And she says this will be a correct result of legalization. So, um, you know, with the bill that can be passed, you know, you, I mean, you could even go to CVS and Walgreens and you could find cannabis products on the shelves. So this news basically was out there and uh, obviously, this is a farm bill, as you know, from 2014. And if the Congress made it legal to grow cannabis, rich industrial hemp, uh, if a farmer got research permits to do that, um, then we could definitely see uh, some positive, uh, you know, action in the market. So this bill seems to have bipartisan support. Uh, there is no indication that it will be passed, but you know what? The news is that it probably is going to be passed. So uh, it's a bit controversial, but uh, that was kind of the rumor that was out there today. And uh, this was reported by a news reporter. So as a result, we saw some action on the chart. And I'm going to let Jim talk about the action because it was pretty damn good. Yeah, uh, we noticed this thing yesterday at 335 bottom. And we should have probably sparked our attention even. I should have probably went ahead and bought me some of it because that thing's way oversold. I'm going to pull up a 20-day chart. First, I'll pull up a yearly chart. And you can see the breakout we had back during when that craving. We almost hit $10. We were a penny shy. And the thing's pulled back, run back into the two, three moving averages, which is the 200, the 100, and the 50. So we've been showing a lot of respect to the 100 SMA right here. And when this thing got down to that 335, we should just went ahead and jumped right in. That was a solid support. You can see it here where it hit that once before and it bounced right up. See right there? Now it bounced right up to that resistance, right about five bucks and then pulled back. Well, we're off to the races again. And that, we hit another resistance right here at 435. Had a little difficulty of breaking out there. We pulled back to that same level, right there around 435, and then we bounced up a little bit. So definitely always keep InBev on your medical marijuana watch list. And same with Cron, same with Tillery, same with CGC. Um, we're, we're, we're hot on all four of them. And ACB ACB's down too. So that's one you also want to add to your watch list. And there's another one we want to talk about that uh, we've mentioned a few times, and we're going to mention it again today. Vegas? Yes, I just want to mention, you know, David's Tea. I mean, we did mention uh, this the other day. I was actually telling you guys about the fact that the new CFO joined, and I gave you a little bit about his bio. His name's Frank. And I told you what his mission is, which is to turn this company around. And, uh, you know, David's T kind of, you know, sympathy play to NBEV and all the other um, stocks out there, but really more sympathy play with NBEV because they're in the beverage business. Um, so I'm going to let Jim talk about that chart because there was some action on the David's T chart, just not the same action that we saw, obviously, on NBEV, uh, but still not discounting uh, David's T at all and definitely have it on your watch. Yeah, I'm going to first pull up a three years chart on this thing. I just want to look at a three. Look at that. Three years ago, this thing was up here at $14.30. Wow. That's and just the day before yesterday, we had a yearly bottom of $1.90. Vegas wanted to bring this up to me yesterday in last night's video, and I 
kind of just turned it down and and I should have had a different attitude about that and we should have talked about this yesterday I didn't realize that we were down here at a dollar ninety at a, at a year's bottom so I'm gonna pull it up back to a year and we're gonna look at a year's chart now beautiful chart here at year high we had 535 with a pretty nice little resistance right around four four dollars four let's say four four fourteen somewhere in that area right around four fifteen so that's what we're gonna call long resistance so we got a little channel here we got a little support at 205 now I'm changing that to 205 to 209 as support area this 216 is going to be a pivot point and we're going to try to bring it up to the channel of that 230 area we'll probably stop right around 222 and we talked about that today and we came real close to hitting that 330 today if we did not hit it at all which I think we did pretty come real close so let's try to retest that 230 and if we can get past that 230 we got an opportunity to bring it up to the next resistance which is right around two dollars and fifty cents don't go hog wild with this one it is a sympathy play but I definitely think this is um, what I call high society tea very good oh. stuff <laughs> that. that's David's tea David's tea okay so um, I just want to throw in a little bonus oh, here bonus time yeah. bonus time I do want to mention that because uh, this popped on my watch today on my scanner but didn't really get into it but i do want to talk about rada r-a-d-a this okay. is the uh israeli ticker and i'm just gonna send something here to jim just gonna send you a link jim that you can show up here yeah it's there um so i just want to mention this stock only because you know i was looking at it and thinking what's going on with it but there was news on it earlier today this is an israeli ticker they're located in Netanya, israel um as you guys know rada is an israeli based defense electric they specialize in the production and sales of tactical for force and border patrols also with aircrafts they sell a lot of stuff to the U.S. Um, anyhow, long and short of this uh, company, um, they did actually raise $12.5 million from a leading Israeli institutional investor. And um, they got two Israeli investors, one called Sagot, and the other one is the Phoenix Insurance Group. And they actually agreed to purchase 4.5 million shares of the company stock for expected gross pro, uh, proceeds of 12.5 million. And also Rada's major shareholder, DBSI, also agreed to invest $1.5 million, which is subject to shareholder approval. So this offering uh, for this you know, investment is going to be closing day, which already probably closed anyway. So the proceeds from this is for general corporate purposes and for obviously to include working capital. So uh, in looking at the chart, um, it did look to me that Rada looked bullish. And I'm going to let Jim talk about what he sees, but I kind of look to see a continuation potentially uh, later this week because I actually think that it's great that they got this money from investors who are putting money into the company. So I think that's actually good news. It's a lot better than, a, than, a, than an offering if they needed an offering or if they needed money, that's for sure. To have extra capital, they can really go to town. So here's a year's chart on RADA. I can see that I've played this before. These red lines are back probably last year's trend lines that I was playing. So we've, we've gone beyond that and we've hit a little resistance up here, which is right around 318 on a yearly chart. Now you can bring it up higher. This resistance can go to 332. You got another one wrapped around right around 340, and then you just keep on bringing them up to around 352. So we're sitting here on the year's chart. Here's the three moving averages. We have got the 200, and we've got the the 50 crossing up over the 100, kind of smooching, kind of a little tight squeeze right there, and it's above that. So I'm going to pull up to the 20-day chart. I'm going to look at this right now. I'm going to see how everything's lined up. 
I see a support level right here. I'm going to go ahead and note at 285. So keep that on watch. Keep 285, 288 as a low support channel. I don't think it's going to get down there. Oh, it can go down there. I'm not saying it can't. I don't ever want to say that. Because what we need to do with this is to get up here to around the $3 level. Once we hit $3, we can more or less say, and it breaks at $3, we can more or less say it's got the mustard to go ahead and continue up to the rest of those other resistances. And having this extra money just might give it a little extra volume and a little extra momentum to move on up. So we've got to hit that $3. If we don't hit the $3, look for the pullback right around the moving averages, which is right around 287. I hate to see it go anything below 283 to stay in this channel to create a new channel and we want it to go ahead and run all the way up to 318 and once it does that and it's got more volume then we can have a new look at it and this is R-A-D-A -A. all right well this concludes our episode for the I Love Stocks Market Report and a little bit longer than the norm because we wanted to really talk about what's happening in Bitcoin because it's actually been a lot of chatter in the market about it. And we really wanted to uh, have someone that we know that knows that area much better than Jim and I to help us uh, share that information with the viewers. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining us, subscribing and following. Really appreciate it. And everyone have a great night because I love stocks. And Jim, anything else to add tonight? Yeah, I want to thank Peter Tahoe for talking to us about Bitcoin. It's always good to learn new stuff and let's have a great day tomorrow um, I still think we're in Santa Claus rally I called it we hit we had a real big high today in the market let's keep this going this momentum and this is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim November the 28th 2018 and we love stocks night everyone okay.